thank you all for joining today. Um, thank you, David and Yoel, for hosting me and allowing me to be here today. This is part of the Yoel Work From Home Wellbeing Series. Um, I participated in the two prior sessions this week with Virginia and Janet. I believe you were in both of those as well. Um, with uh, Shara yesterday and Bindu, I found those highly engaging and hopefully we can match that today. Um, yeah, my name's Mike Normand and I am a leadership trainer and executive coach. And yeah, I, I graduated, uh, you know, my, my work history, if you will, I've, I've got an electrical engineering degree. Uh, and about 10 years into doing technical work, I, I had an opportunity to shift into human resources and the proverbial never look back. Um, so spent the last 15 years or so of my career primarily in learning and development. And the feather in my cap, if you will, would be that I ran global learning and development at eBay for five years while they grew from 2,000 to 10,000 employees. That was quite an interesting ride. Um, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead uh, and share. Got some slides to show you today. Um, today, I want to talk to you about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, uh, this idea of managing attention, which you can see here that I'm looking at this as, as a superpower for life. And my experience is that most of us don't spend much time thinking about our attention and certainly not spend much time thinking about how it impacts our life. And I would like to suggest that it's possible that at the end of this very brief session, you may never see your attention the same way again. Uh, I know that was true for me when I was first exposed to these ideas and hence I'm now sharing this with the world. And if you haven't picked up on my double entendre here with the, a superpower for life, it is the idea that this is a superpower for living life and it is a superpower you can use for the rest of your life. Um, and so, Today, I would like to um, very quickly share a little bit of background and my, my thoughts on the benefits of managing attention. I want to make sure we're aligned on how I define the superpower. And look, it's great to have people talk at you about things. Um, I find it much more powerful to, to have an experience of things. And Yoel is all about experience. Um, so we're going to have some experiential activities to, to feel firsthand what it is that I'm, I'm talking about. And we'll have a chance to talk a little bit about ideas for application that people can, you know, leave this session with and start applying them this afternoon. Um, cool. So background. I went out on my own. I left the corporate world after a 25 year corporate career in 2011. Uh, to try my hand at leadership training, executive coaching as an independent, and ended up doing a lot of personal growth work um, that, I, that I found transformational. And as part of that process, I, my purpose shifted. And, and my purpose now is to raise self-awareness in the world to help as many people as possible achieve more of their potential. And I have this idea of, actually, what I'm noticing is I, I have the pictures of all of you to the left, so I'm looking over there, but that's not where my camera is. <laughs> so I'm going to put you up top. Um, this, this idea that I had around self-coaching um, to allow people to drive their own development and, and really steep in self-awareness building, I knew that self-observation you see in the middle of your screen here, I knew that self-observation was going to be a critical component of this. And as I got into this work, it dawned on me, it became clear to me that helping people more effectively manage their attention would help them be more effective self-observers. And so um, you can see, you know, it makes sense that 
paying better attention in general would help one become a more effective self-observer. But as I dug into this, I realized that there were a lot of other benefits that came with this skill. Um, for example, being more present, you know, be bringing yourself to the present moment, um, having more ability to focus, which in fact can improve effectiveness and productivity. Uh, improving relationships it's pretty amazing what happens when you start to be with the one you're with <laughs> right like the the, the 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 quality of those relationships can can really uh be enhanced emotional intelligence another hot one today right this being more attentive really helps you get to know yourself better helps to get to know you know the, the awareness of others is better and um, oh by the way you know can be a stress reducer as well so as I step back and look at this really robust list of benefits, you know, I thought, wow, like there really is a superpower here. And so the way that I define the superpower, just again, to make sure we're all on the same page, is this idea that we have the ability to direct or control our attention on demand. Okay. And there's a couple of skills that sit underneath this that I think can, can be really helpful. Um, one is catching when your attention has drifted and non-judgmentally bringing it back. Now, for any of you that are on this session that are meditators, that idea is going to resonate with you, right? When you're, when you're meditating and you notice your attention drifting off, the idea to bring it back. Um, so this is putting some of those principles to work, you know, in day-to-day in -day situations. And the second point there is this idea of, I like to call it time traveling, right? The ability to bring yourself to the present moment on demand, okay? And we will talk about that today so that by the time we're done here, for those of you that are wondering how to do that, you're gonna find out. Okay, very cool. So what I'd love to do now is have folks type one, two, three things in the, into the chat and, and share those. I'm, I'm curious to, to get your thoughts on what makes this hard, right? Like what are some key challenges that you have that make it hard to pay attention in this wonderfully like sedate world that we live in? <laughs> I'm not sure I'm seeing what you're typing. Dave, are you seeing anything yet or? Yeah, we've got um, lack of inspiration. We have mind wandering, chasing white rabbits, too many tech things to check, email, phone, et cetera, waiting for the plumber to arrive since 10 a.m. Uh, multiple sources coming at you at once. Work from home is a big distraction, being authentic. Perfect. Um, it's a great list. Thank you for that. And thank you, everybody, for, for chiming in. So, yeah, like, look, if this was easy, like, we wouldn't need people out there helping us figure out, like, how do I get more effective at managing my attention? And, you know, I'm going to get real sciency on you for a second or, you know, maybe a little more complicated than it needs to be. There, there's a book I read a couple years ago called The Distracted Brain by Adam Ghazali and Larry Rosen. Yeah, Larry. Um, and they are both from the science field. And yeah, this is not a book you want to run out and read unless you're in for like a science read. <laughs> um, so one of the things they, they talk about, though, is this idea of interference, right? And what the list that, that Dave just rattled off, which was all of your input, are examples of interference, right? And so they're, the way they describe it is that we have... Um, external, what they call distractions and interruptions, and we have internal distractions and interruptions. And so, for example, an external, let me step back. The difference between a distraction and an interruption is the level of engagement that you give to the, to the interference. So, for example, if your phone buzzes and you know it's a text message, and you look at your phone, we're still in distraction mode. If you then start to respond, you start to get pulled into the distraction, 
it shifts into what they determine, what they call an interruption. The idea being that distractions are much easier to recover from and get your focus back where you want it to be than if you get into a full interruption. We as humans are all of the belief that we can handle interruptions very well. And I'm sure you've, you've all experienced this where, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do this with Dave real quick. Like, Hey Dave. Yeah. We're having a conversation, Dave. I'm going to keep talking, Dave. I'm listening to you. Like, yeah, I'm with you. Right. Like, that's a full on distraction. I am not fully with Dave. I am not present with Dave. I'm, I'm, I'm separating my attention into multiple places. We tend to think we're fine in that mode. We're not as fine as we think we are. Similarly, on the internal side, there were, you know, chasing white rabbits, not being inspired, right? It's very easy to have internal disruption. So I might not look at Dave and think that he's distracted because he's looking at me, <laughs> but he may be thinking like, why is Mike still talking? What is the thing? Like, oh, I can't wait for dinner tonight. Um, what am I gonna have for dinner tonight? And again, the idea is it's a distraction if you notice it and say, like, go away, I'm talking to Mike. It's an interruption when you start to engage and have that, yeah, what am I gonna have for dinner tonight? Well, there's chicken and there's fish, right? So again, it's just a helpful way to think about, I'll circle back to this toward the end around Yes, we live in a world filled with distraction and it makes it really hard to pay attention. Um, and there are levels of interference that, that we succumb to. Cool. Now, let's jump into that experience mode that, that I said um, we were gonna do. Um, this is a very simple activity and it's described in those two words on the top of the screen which is I'm going to ask you with your eyes open to follow your attention for let's say 20 seconds. I'm just gonna get my timer out. And here's the other part of the instruction. Don't try to control your attention. Just let your attention go and follow it wherever it takes you, okay? So I'm gonna go 20 seconds of silence, again with your eyes open, follow your attention. Awesome. So I am gonna bring us back for, to the screen. Now I can see the chat. I am curious if any of you, and I can see a handful of you, um, if any of you noticed that your attention was moving. Right? And that's because it does. <laughs> And our attention is moving. Our attention is dynamic. Our attention bounces from thing to thing. And if you were able to follow the instructions, and by the way, I just, I want to acknowledge, like for some people, when I do this, it's like, it's the first time I've ever actually followed my attention like that. And it can be weird. Like, I don't even know what this is. And some of, some of us may even have a voice going, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right. Um, but your attention is moving and if you followed the instructions and didn't try to control it, you realize your attention moves without you. It moves with or without your conscious involvement. And on the one hand, you knew this, right? We knew this. On the other hand, that's sort of profound, heady stuff. And I know for me, this is one of those pieces that when I first really let that idea sink in, like, oh, wow, like that's, that's pretty cool. And we spend a lot of our time on autopilot, not controlling our attention. Our attention is on its own, taking us with it somewhere where we don't necessarily want to be. Okay. Now what I'd love is again, we can use the chat is 
I'd love to hear a few of you, actually from all of you that are willing to, to type in, tell me one or two or three places during that 20 seconds, where did your attention land? Right, our attention's moving, but it tends to land someplace. Ah, take that in, ah, take that in. Um, My boss is slacked. I was just looking at the screen, background noise. Oh wait, I, there's one from looking at the screen, noticing music in the other room, reading the words on the screen, thinking about the phone sitting on my leg. Yeah, thanks, Michael, that's great. Um, landed back on me, trying to keep it on the second O in the word following on the screen, right? So, and again, that's an interesting one, David, right? Because you were trying. So there was a maybe not letting go, if you will. Um, anyway, here's the thing, right? And I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And David, if anything else pops up, I'm no longer going to see it in chat. So even if we were all in the same location, I would not be able to say with any level of accuracy where any of your attention went during that time. Our attention is unique. And in this case, we're all in different places, right? So no idea where it went specifically. I can tell you conceptually where your attention went. Our attention moves in and through three locations. The first is our body, right? Bodily sensation. Something feels warm, something feels hot. Um, I have an itch, there's some pain. Uh, focus on my breath, focus on my feet on the ground right? There's bodily sensation I can focus on. A second is this idea of what I call world. And more correctly, it would be your world as experienced directly by you through one of your five senses. Something you see, something you hear, right? Something you feel, etc. And the third location that our attention moves in and through is our mind, right? We can go up into our thoughts. Now, very cool, this is, a, this is a geography, I call this the geography of attention, the landscape of attention. And one of the things that it does for us is it helps us think about how can we bring ourselves to the present moment, which earlier I said that's part of the superpower. Because two of these locations can only be experienced in the present moment, right? Bodily sensation and your direct experience of your senses, think about it, you cannot focus on either of those things in any other time than the present. Because if you're thinking like, well, my leg hurt yesterday, okay, that's a thought. That's, that's, you're in your mind. Okay. So when you're thinking about how do I come to the present moment, I can come to the present moment through paying attention to my body or to my senses. Great. So we're now going to do a second activity where I'm going to have you label where your attention goes. And so as you do this again, we'll do another 20 seconds, follow your attention. And Michael, if I had your chat up, I would just read it out loud and say, so when I heard the music in the other room, I would label that world. When I felt something, my leg itched, I would label that body. Right? When I started thinking about what am I going to work on later today or that meeting I have coming up next, I would label that mind. So it's the same as the first activity. You're just starting to label things. And in theory, your attention will move differently this time than it did, you know, five minutes ago. So let's do that. Okay. 20 seconds, follow your attention, label where it lands. Okay, great. So I'll just say that with this geography of attention, we're now able to locate our attention in this geography at any moment. 
And so in some ways it expands our thinking around the question, where are you, right? If you were to ask this woman on the right on the screen, where are you? And she's, I'm right here. You say, no, 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 where are you, right? She's clearly somewhere else. And I'm sure we've all had that experience of being someplace physically and somewhere else mentally. This gives us the capacity to start thinking about where am I mentally? Okay, um, great. So let's do another one. I like to think about, uh, and some of you have had this experience, but imagine um, jumping into a stream in an inner tube and floating down the stream um, and just having a good old time. And you know, then you get to a certain point where you hop out of the stream and you run back to the top and you jump back in and you do it again, right? And right, this is just great fun. These three activities are analogous to that inner tubing experience. So in that first activity, we simply hopped in an inner tube, floated down the stream of our attention, just sort of noticing what's going on, right? And we hopped out, we ran back to the top, we jumped back in for the second activity, and then we inserted some awareness into the mix, some consciousness, if you will. And now we floated down and we weren't controlling where the stream took us, but we were now labeling the landscape as it went by, okay? Now we're hopping out again, running back to the top of the stream, jumping back in, and this time we're gonna give you more of a rudder so that you can actually direct where you're going, okay? And we're gonna use this geography. And so I'm gonna call out one of these three locations, body, world, mind, and I'm gonna ask you to focus your attention there. I'm gonna have you hold it there for six or seven seconds and I'm gonna call out another location and have you shift your attention to the other location and hold it there. And so if I call out body, choose one bodily sensation to focus on. If you have something that hurts, maybe you don't wanna focus on something that hurts. If, um, you know, focus on your breath, focus on your butt in the seat, your feet on the chair, some bodily sensation, try to hold your attention on that. If I call out world, you can be looking at the screen, you could be listening to the music in the other room, pick one sense that you're gonna focus on and again, hold your attention there. If I call out mind, just go into your head and let your thoughts run free, okay? And so we're gonna do this and I'm gonna start with body. World. Mind. World. Mind. Body. All right, great. So, what this shows you, and again, not new information to anybody, you can control your attention. I am also imagining, because of the experience I've had with so many people who've done this before, and my own experience of this activity is that this was hard to even hold your attention on one thing for six or seven seconds can be hard, <laughs> right? And so just like we go to the gym to build body muscle, the only way to get better at managing your attention is to practice to build the brain muscle that's associated with attention. Okay, now let's see. I would love, and let me just check time. 
yeah, we, we're, we're in good shape. So I would like David to break us into some small groups. And if you can sort of quickly scratch down enough on a piece of paper to know what these two questions are. Um, the, the first question is, how might you utilize what we've just learned to help you be more focused present? Sorry, more focused or more present, right? Synonyms there. Um, actually, they're not synonyms. Scratch that from the tape, David. I'm kidding, but those are not synonyms. Um, and the second question is, if, if there's nothing sort of coming through for you, like, oh, I can see what I might do with some of that new material we just covered, what techniques have you found successful in your current world that, that help you be more focused or present? And so when you get into your small groups, I'm just going to give you like three or four minutes. Um, and you can talk about each, each of you can choose one of these questions to talk about. And in that case, talk a little bit more at length about it, or you can choose to address both of them and then be a little more succinct in your thoughts about both of them. But um, each person in each group can talk about either of these questions. Um, and we'll pull you, we'll, we'll do a four minute breakout, David. Um, and then we'll come back as a larger group and see if there was anything interesting that, that people want to share. Okay. All right, David, I will turn it over to you to push whatever magic button it is that you push. It's inviting me to a breakout room, David. So David, in theory, nobody else can hear me right now. Correct. You're still okay. here. Yeah. So what happened was that people had left. So we are down. There's only two breakouts. There were 12 people. And now I think there's eight plus us. So wow. We lost a few people. I bored them out. Shit, dude. You don't know how much that makes me feel bad. I think some people don't like being in breakouts. I think that's, that's the deal. So, uh, so we, have one, two, three, we have five in one and three in the other. I don't know how that happened or how you didn't. Well, because it's inviting me to break out room too. No, I see that and you haven't joined, which is not a big deal. I'm just wondering why it didn't. I think this is a Zoom bug because usually it'll split them. It'll split it evenly. But I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, four. And then five is nine. So we lost three. That's why. So, because it was originally two groups of four. So there was probably one group of four and one group of five. Anyway, neither here nor there. Alicia, Allison, and Michael are in one. So we're good. Did you set a timer, by the way? I did um, not. No, but I, you know, I think. Does I it have a timer? Does 42. It I didn't set one, but I can broadcast a message that well, there's one minute left. Let's assume we broke them out at 1242. You want them to go for four minutes. So, uh, you know, either 1245 or 1246, you tell me, and then a, a minute to go, I will send them a, I'll broadcast a message to them. So who do we lose? We lost. Dude, you don't know how hard it is for me right now to not be feeling bad about losing people. Wow. Don't, don't be Mike, don't take it personally. People just get, people get, they lose their attention. Yeah. And they don't want to be in, in a small group because a lot of people don't want to talk. And there's also people that are not in a position to talk, but just want to listen. Right. And um, they're kind of forced. Yeah, of course. And I, yeah, I got to, I got to, gosh, I, I have to teach, tell myself this so often. It's like, don't yeah, let it, don't let it get This isn't for lost, everybody. We lost Rosemary Johnson. And they also might have lost their internet connection. So we lost Rosemary Johnson, Janet Biagi, and... Wow, I lost my San Mateo gal. Uh, Hervey never came back. Uh, and yeah, I think we just lost those two. We lost those three, right? So no biggie. Janet was engaged, so I, I think she probably just had something going on. Two, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so. So we're at 45. Minutes. I'm going to give them one minute warning. And then does that one minute, does that give them an additional 30 seconds or? We can give them whatever you want. You tell me when you want to bring them back and I will, I will, I just have to hit a button. So I it's think, 45. Yeah, I think. Um, I would say 30 seconds from now. Okay. I thought it was great. I think it's an awesome, you're doing great. I think it's an it's awesome presentation. Thank you. Really, really good. Excellent. All right, 12.46 now. In like 15. I got 10, 10 seconds. Okay. All right, ready? Yes. And Diana was with Shara. Is that right? I don't know. No, I was sorry. Not, no, 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 not not today. I, I was thinking. Oh that. yeah. Yeah. I was. Uh, I came yesterday. Yes. Exactly. Looks like we're just missing the other breakout room. It should be. Yeah, I think um, when you bring them back to get like a 30 second counter. Yeah, I just realized that, but these guys got back, came back earlier. So that was a little odd, but. I saw the timer and then it disappeared. And then I was like, did I click something? So then I just left. Yeah, I, I've done that before, Diana, where it's like, I, I, I'm trying to get it out of the way. And then like, I leave my breakout group. I'm like, oh, wait, <laughs> not yeah. what I wanted to do. Um, Are they, oh, there they are. Okay, great. Welcome back, everyone. Um, so I'm curious if there's anybody who would like to share anything that you know, one or two things from the group. Any any of any thoughts on how to use what we learned today, or any other practices that you already are using to bring yourself to the present moment to to help you focus your attention. Michael, I yeah, see thanks, you Mike. unmuted. Here, I'll just jump in real quick. Um, Thank uh, you. So thanks, I appreciate. I, I like the categorization. I think that was helpful. Um, what I mentioned uh, in our in our uh, little chat room there was, uh, I've been working my meditation program pretty consistently for the last well, let's just say the last year. I've gotten really you know focused on doing it seven days a week here over the last three four months. And what I found was that my distractions were less about my mind or my body and more about the outside world. You know, whether it was the music in the other room or the noise of the neighbors doing their hedges next door or whatever it was, it's that outside distraction. So your world. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got Very it. good. And the fact that the plumber should have been here within the last couple of hours that I'm still waiting. And so just, I'm curious, Michael, just real quickly, if you could, what's your sense of how that categorization or what I call the geography of, of, of attention, how can that be helpful to you? in helping you manage your attention more effectively? So if there's something that's in my mind or in my body, those are actually things that I have some control over. The outside world, I, I can't control the fact that the plumber's not here or that the neighbors decided to do the hedges right now. It just, it just is. So I have to uh, you know, just accept that that's the way it is. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, sure. any, anybody else have anything to share. And you don't have to. So I think our group talked a lot about um, being present with your attention on your body um, mm -hmm. as a way to like quiet all the distractions on like the mind level and the, the world level. I think at least what I took away from it was if you if you focus on that, then you can kind of better handle the rest of it, the different nice. levels. Yeah, and I think, thank you, Diana. I think, I think from my experience with, with people, 
the most common way that I'm aware of that people sort of bring themselves to the present moment is to focus on their breath, right? It's like, and again, not everybody's thinking about it in terms of bringing themselves to the present moment. Diana, you, what you were just suggesting is people may be thinking about it in terms of de-stressing, calming down, right? There is something to be said about, okay, take a deep breath, right? And just get, get more centered, get more grounded. And yeah, for me, that is in my language, bringing yourself, right? Bringing your attention to your body, right? To help you be more present. Um, so that's great. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. Um, thank you for, for sharing. And just have a few more things to, to share. So one of the, one of the things I, I like to um, say about this idea of managing attention. Look, we, we've all gotten along just fine in our lives without necessarily starting to pay attention to our attention, manage our attention, etc. This is a, a choice. Right. Um, and my experience and encourage you to be open minded to this is that choosing to become more aware of bring more conscious intention to your attention can literally change your life. Um, and here, just real quickly, is a summary of the points that we covered. Um, right. We said our attention is always on the move. It moves with or without our conscious involvement. We now have this geography that Michael alluded to, right? This, our, our, our attention moves in and through these three locations, body, world, and mind. We can locate our attention in that geography. We can control our attention. We can move it. We can direct it. It is not easy and control takes practice. Now, um, I do also wanna thank Gary Sherman is a friend, colleague, and teacher of mine. Um, yes, the book that he has written, Perceptual Integration, The Mechanics of Awakening, is every bit as deep as it sounds. Um, not for the faint of heart, I would say. Um, but Gary, I just uh, acknowledge him because a lot of the content that I've shared with you today is, is, is his content that he's, he's allowed me to integrate into my work. Um, so thank you, Gary. Um, and I wanted to share with you, so you just had little group discussions about things you might do to bring yourself present to manage your attention. just want to give you a couple ideas um, that I use in my program. The first is this very simple notion of bring yourself to the present moment five minutes a day by focusing your attention on your body, focusing your attention on your world, and Frankly, doesn't have to be five minutes in a row. It's, it's 20 seconds here, 20 seconds there. Every time you brush your teeth, you know, when's the last time you actually felt the bristles of the brush on your teeth? Um, taking a shower, right? Like walking the dog, like find opportunities to bring yourself to the present moment. And just five minutes a day can start to really shift your experience. Um, Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson famously wrote, Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Don't let your distractions grow up to be interruptions, right? As you become more aware of these distractions coming at you, you have the ability to make a more conscious choice about how much to engage with that distraction and choosing to try not to let it become an interruption for you. Um, and look, just start pay attention to your attention. You know, one of my favorite examples, we're all in meetings all the time. Um, start to pay attention to how present are you in these meetings. And as you pay more attention to this, I guarantee you, you will become more aware of when your attention has drifted. And it gives you the power to start gently bringing it back to where you want it to be. Okay, so those are some learning practices that you can take with you. Um, I did just want to revisit, right, like this, this idea we covered today on strengthening attention in and of itself can be life-changing, literally. Um, and when I told you at the beginning that you may never see your attention the same way again, trust that when I first saw these ideas, I didn't walk out going, oh, I'm never going to see my attention the same way again. It was just 
afterwards, back to Michael, like I started to see everything in terms of body, mind, world. I started to really notice these things and it really did shift my experience of my attention from that point forward. You can't unsee what you just saw. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that this is coupled with these other skills that I teach around self-coaching, right? The integrative power of doing all of these things to self-drive your uh, changes in your behavior can, can, be, can be really powerful. Um, and I'd like to end with a, a quote. So Jerry Me Hunter, who has the longest title I've ever seen, um, this is from a TED Talk that he has, which is really good um, if you want to look it up. But here's his thoughts on society. He says, on society, <clears throat> let me try that again. Here's his thoughts on attention, <laughs> right? He says, as a society, we don't pay enough attention to attention. We don't take care of it, preserve it, grow it. We need to take care of attention. Quality of attention is quality of life, quality of relationship, quality of work. Attention is the secret ingredient that connects us to ourselves and others. Anyway, I love that quote, and I think it gives attention the place it deserves in, in really thinking about how important it is to our, our life experience. I've, I've heard another statement where people say, um, what you attend to, right, where you put your attention defines your experience, and your life is a collection of those experiences, right? So there's a pretty straight line between what you're paying attention to and, and your life.